Hi, this is Pastor David Elijah and we're New Millennium Kingdom Church. Today is Saturday, June the 12th, 2021. We're going to continue studying the book of Revelation. We are in chapter 19. So before we begin, let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this time and season that you have brought us into this earth so that we would be witnesses of all the end time events that are to take place. So help us to be prepared in our spirit, in our physical bodies, in our minds and our emotions in every possible way. Help us to be obedient to your word and help us to overcome all things through the blood of Jesus. So we thank you, Father, for those who are watching. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen their faith and make them overcomers in these last days. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Last week we covered the first 10 verses. Now we will continue with verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. So now you see Jesus being revealed from heaven. The heaven is opened and Jesus is riding a white horse. And what is his name? He is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. The same Jesus who came to save humanity, the ones who he would call into his kingdom. They will be the ones rejoicing to see this day. But the wicked will have to face his judgment. They will have to face his righteousness. And he is going to make war against the wicked. And he says, as in the days of Noah, so it shall be for the coming of the Son of Man. We are in such times. And we see everywhere faithlessness, all kind of uh, wickedness and rebellion and disobedience. We see the occult that has taken uh, over even Western society. It's a shocking thing to see, but it is there. It's all around us, whether we like it or not. We have Freemasonry that is doing so much evil and so much wickedness behind the scenes. They always do things hidden and secret. And it's affecting humanity because they are in the government, they are in the media, they are in music, they are in, in the financial world, they are everywhere. They are positioned and placed by Satan, by Lucifer, in all positions of power. That's why when Jesus comes, he will judge righteously against all the wicked rulers, all the captains of industry, all the people that are right now in power and authority, those who are abusing their powers to dominate world populations and cities and states and nations. They will be judged severely. Jesus is coming to make war against them, to judge them for their unrighteousness, for their wickedness, for their evil ways and their rebellion against him. Revelation 19.12 His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. So Jesus' eyes are pure, pure. And when he looks at someone, it's like he's watching with flames of fire. It will go right through you. Nothing can be hidden from him. Right now, the wicked are hiding things. They do a lot of blood sacrifice. They do a lot of rituals. They do a lot of witchcraft and black magic. They do all kinds of things to, to gain access, to gain power, to gain authority, to gain wealth. There's a lot of evil that takes place behind the scenes. And a lot of people who want fame and fortune in Hollywood and the music industry and even in the financial world, a lot of evil takes place. Those who want to become politicians, they do so much compromise. They do so much wicked deals and, and all kinds of things behind the scenes that are not put forth. And the media is an expert in hiding and censoring the truth and just pushing out propaganda and lies and deception. That's the role of mass media. But thanks to the internet and to independent journalists and to independent researchers, we get the real truth out. And people are waking up now. People were in a delusional bubble for a long time. They were in their own little illusions that they were living in their own little dream world. But now they're starting to wake up. This COVID has woken up the planet to realize there's something wrong. 
that this is not normal. Why are governments behaving like this? Why are their rulers and the authorities are trying to dominate and control and even kill humanity through their lockdowns? And there's so much negative effects and consequences of all these things that are taking place right now. But because of all these wicked things, when Jesus comes, he will judge and he will make war against the wicked. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Revelation 19.13 He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. The blood is his own blood. It's a, it's a, a visible symbol of what he has done for sinful humanity. He died on the cross for us. So his cloth, his robe, has, he has robes that are dipped in blood. It looks pl plain white, bright and everything, but you see blood on it. And that blood is a reminder to us that it's only through his blood that we are saved, that we are saved from the wrath of God. We are saved from his righteous judgments. If we prayed and said, Lord, give us what we deserve, he would send us to hell, all of us. We all deserve hell. Because we were born in iniquity. We have committed sins throughout our lives. It's only through the blood of Jesus. It's only through his sacrifice on the cross that we are able to come into God's presence and to his kingdom. We can only come to God through Jesus Christ alone, through his shed blood, through the cross of Calvary. There is no other way. God has ordained it that way. That's why Satanists and those who worship Lucifer, they do blood sacrifices to access Satan's kingdom and his power and his evil ways. Yes, and for a temporary season, they will have power, they will have authority, they will have fame and fortune. All these people that are out there, all the movie stars, all the musicians, rap stars, they all have their access to the kingdom of darkness. They don't worship God, they don't glorify God, they mock Jesus Christ openly. And they glorify Satan, they glorify Lucifer. Because they are telling you openly, to your face, mocking you, saying, look, we worship Satan. Look where we are today because of Satan, because of Lucifer. But that's a very short season. And then God's wrath will come upon all of them, the whole industry. The media, Hollywood, the music industry, and all the politicians of the world. All the rulers and the kings and the businessmen. Remember, Babylon gets destroyed because God has crushed them like grapes. That's what's waiting for them. Right now they are in power. Right now they are ruling. Right now they are in the limelight, in the spotlight. But the time is coming when Jesus returns. That's why they hate Jesus so much. They hate Christians. They have this hatred towards the church and towards Christians and towards Jesus. Because they know that time is running out. Lucifer knows his time is running out. Because when Jesus returns... He will crush them all. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. When we study the Word of God, that's the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is called the Word of God. The, his name is called the Word of God. When we present the Word of God to people, we are presenting Jesus. We are saying, receive Christ, receive the Son of God. What do you see people around you today? Don't talk to me about Jesus. Don't mention Jesus to me. It's offensive when you share your faith to people because they don't want God. They don't want Jesus. They want heaven. They want the blessings. They want the miracles. They want the prophecies. They want all of that, but they don't want Jesus because with Jesus comes obedience. With Jesus comes repentance of sin. With Jesus comes your acknowledging your own wickedness, your own wretchedness, your own iniquity. I keep repeating myself, I have come across wicked men that will not acknowledge their own iniquity. They're always projecting blame on somebody else. Anyone you come across that's always projecting blame on someone else is wicked as hell. And they will see the wrath of God because Jesus calls them hypocrites. You have people like that in your own family. Hypocrites. Always projecting blame on someone else. Only sociopaths do that. They have no conscience. They feel no guilt, no shame, no condemnation, no repentance of sin, no obedience to God, no love for God, no love for humanity. These are cold-blooded, cold-hearted, ruthless uh, leprechauns. I call them leprechauns because they're from the pit of hell. 
they have no humanity in them and they're always projecting blame on others they're always having a pity party the, all across this country there's an epidemic of this nobody takes personal responsibility for their own garbage but they're always blaming others always playing the you know the sad face and all this nonsense and god is tired of that he's fed up he's coming to crush them all they are hypocrites there's no hypocrites in heaven how difficult it is to just say lord here i am i'm a hypocrite i'm a liar i'm a deceiver i'm a coward i can't even face my own sins i can't even face you because i'm ashamed i'm embarrassed it's the reason that people don't say that is because of pride pride blocks them from humbling themselves and saying you know what i messed up you know what it's my mistake you know what i did wrong it's pride that's the spirit of satan revelation 19:14 and the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen white and clean followed him on white horses who are the armies of heaven those are the believers they already with jesus the marriage supper of the lamb and everything has taken place and now he's coming back with an army of his saints and they were given fine linen remember fine linen was the good acts the righteous acts of the saints these are the saints in heaven old testament and new testament white and clean followed him on white horses so now they they're coming forth jesus is at the head of this army they're following behind him and they're coming to judge the earth they're coming to destroy the wicked they themselves are just going to be witnesses it's jesus who's going to do it and they will watch from behind him and they will be in awe and they will be thanking god that they were able to humble themselves and accept christ before this day came they'll say thank you lord you saved me before your wrath came upon the earth and upon the wicked revelation 1915 now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that's how powerful his word is his word is like a sharp sword he will just say one word just like he told lazarus when he was dead in the tomb he says lazarus come forth and a dead man sitting in the tomb 3 4 days rotting body came back to life now jesus is going to come back and tell these living people to die he's going to do the opposite now he's going to come up on the earth and a sharp sword is going to come out of his mouth and he's going to tell all these people die he just have to say one word and all of these people will die revelation 1915 now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that sharp sword is not to bless them and to make them feel good and to entertain them and to make them laugh no that sharp sword is coming to cut their heads off for doing wickedness for harming little children for being abusive for doing all kinds of sexual immorality for homosexuality for lesbianism for abortions for so many things that they have done for sacrificing themselves to satan so god is going to judge them very severely a lot of preachers say oh god loves you unconditionally of course he does he loves every person he created every human being but when they violate his commandments when they come against him directly then he will show his wrath there's no more unconditional love now there's wrath waiting for the wicked god hates the wicked they need to wake up and realize that and preachers and pastors need to understand the what that unconditional love is all about it's for his redeemed the ones he has saved the ones he has gathered together to himself he loves them unconditionally the rest are the wicked and only the bible says the wrath of god abides upon the disobedient it stays on them it doesn't leave them the wrath of god stays on them not the love of god you have to understand the full gospel you have to understand the full counsel of god you can't just preach amazing grace and you know unconditional love and grace grace and mercy mercy and forgiveness forgiveness look on the other side there's wrath coming there's judgment coming it's not coming on animals it's not coming on on demons they already judged the devil and his angels and all the fallen angels already under judgment this wrath is coming for humanity now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations nations america is not exempt europe is not exempt china is not exempt africa is not exempt no nation is exempt australia is not exempt 
every nation will come under the wrath of Almighty God. And it's Jesus who's coming. No saint is going to show up. Mary is not coming. The Pope is not there. Nobody else is there. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the returning King of kings and Lord of lords. He is coming back to judge and strike the nations. Nations. It's not just we are the good guys, they are the bad guys. That's what politicians do. They play this game that we are righteous, we are good. Look, those bad people on the other side of the world, they are bad and we are good. No, you are as wicked as hell as those people on the other side. And God's going to strike both sides. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Have you ever felt a rod of iron strike you on the back? It's a painful strike. That's what Jesus is going to do. He's going to strike them on their back with a rod of iron to get discipline out of them. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The symbolism is about in the old days, they would take grapes, put them in a wine press, which was called a wine press, so like a big giant bucket, and then people would get in there with bare feet and they would start squishing the grapes with their feet. And they didn't have machines and they didn't have any technology. It was done by feet. You had to crush the grapes with your feet and squish out all the juice and then the liquid was drained out and wine was made out of it. And Jesus is using that example of what he's going to do on the earth. When he comes upon the earth, he's going to crush nations with his feet. So, but he's a loving God. He's a loving Savior. Yes, he is. But now he's already rescued those who love him, who obey him, who serve him, who worship him. And whatever is left, the wickedness of mankind, he's going to come to crush it completely. It says he himself. He's not sending angels to do it. In the previous chapters, he sent angels with bowls of wrath and all kinds of seals were opened and trumpets were blown and all those things upon the earth, upon humanity to bring them to repentance. But they still rebel. They still blaspheme God. They still came against God's will. So now he says, okay, now it's my turn now. I send the angels to warn you. I send the angels to bring judgments upon you. I send asteroids to strike the waters, to poison the waters. I did all those things. These wicked human beings are still not repenting. So now I'm just going to come and crush them. Yes, I created them. I gave them life. I gave them the air to breathe and food to eat. And I clothed them. I prospered them. I blessed them. I built, they allowed, allowed them to build cities and nations and all of that. And they turn around and stab God in the back. They turn around and disobeyed and rebelled against God. And he kept calling them. He kept calling them. He kept sending his servants. He kept sending his preachers. Bring them back. Bring them back. And they kept rejecting Jesus. So now he says he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. God is a loving Savior. God is a loving Abba Father. He's a Heavenly Father. But He also has fierce wrath. This wrath comes about after decades and centuries of patience, long-suffering. God has been waiting and waiting patiently for His children to return. For them to repent, for them to humbly obey Him, for them to acknowledge the Creator of the heavens and the earth. But they have turned their back, they have re rebelled, and they've gone towards Lucifer, they've gone towards Satanism, they've gone into the occult, they've gone into the New Age. They have openly uh, blasphemed God. So he says, okay, fine, your time is up. You were given a million chances, now I'm coming to just crush you. Read it again. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Jesus is not coming to make wine with grapes. He's coming to crush human beings and all their blood is going to spill out. The grapes are getting crushed. And that's the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. It's God Almighty's will for the wicked to die in that way. He said, why would God do that? Because these wicked men and women have killed children. They have done ritual sacrifices. They've done blood sacrifices. They've done all kinds of evil things. They have worshipped Moloch. They have worshipped Lucifer. They have worshipped Baphomet. All the fallen angels, they have bowed down to them for power and glory and, and riches and honor and respect in this world, in this society. So God says, now I will crush you and I will destroy all that you got from Lucifer. 
That's why they hate Jesus. That's why they hate Christ. That's why they hate the Christians. They hate us. If you come across people that are hating on you, it's because they belong to Satan. They are the seed of the serpent. Don't be surprised when you have so much hatred coming at you. They are the seed of the serpent. God knows those that are belonging to him and he knows exactly who the seed of the serpent are. They rule this planet today. The God of this age, Lucifer, rules this earth. Say, but Jesus came and defeated him on the cross. And yes, but this 2,000 years, Satan was given advantage by humanity to come back. Say, we want power. We don't want God. It's humans that allow Satan to come into our territory, into our domain, and give him authority by doing the deals with Lucifer, selling their soul to the devil for quick money and riches and power and everything. And Jesus says, you must come to me by faith. You must wait on me. I will bless you in my timeline. So people don't want to wait. They're too impatient. No, I want it now. So you want it now? Okay, let me go to Lucifer. He'll give it to me right now. With God, I have to wait. This is the arrogance of mankind. And that's why God will come to punish these people. Because they couldn't wait on God. Faith is waiting on God. Faith is saying, Lord, whatever you have for me, whatever blessings you have for me, I will receive it. The arrogance says, no, I want everything and I want it right now. And if you don't give it to me, God, I'm angry with you and I'm mad at the pastor, I'm mad at that church. They didn't pray for me. They didn't bless me. They didn't prophesy over me. They didn't see my vision come to pass. So I'm going to go somewhere else. Then they bounce around from church to church to church like monkeys. And then they finally go to their father, the devil. Because they think the church is there to, for them to manipulate and to use and abuse and take whatever they can from God. That's not how it works. At least in the Western Hemisphere, you see that kind of pattern. And people fall away now. They're like, oh, church is boring and church has nothing for me, so why should I go to church? Don't go to church. Nobody's telling you to go to church. Go to Jesus. They don't want to go to Jesus. I don't want Jesus. He doesn't give me anything. He doesn't bless me. I can't be waiting around for him forever. I prayed. He didn't answer me, so why should I wait for him? Fine. Your impatience is going to send you straight to hell. Oh, but Satan will give it to me. Lucifer will give it. If I do some black magic, if I do some witchcraft, if I go to the wizard and the witch, she will do some conjuring and some calling out the demons from hell, and they will give me power. All the magicians today, all the famous magicians, David Blaine, Chris Angel, all these people, they have made a pact with Satan. That's why they do that kind of magic. It's through satanic power. That's not normal magic. That is demonic power and force involved. Revelation 19.16 And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. So when he comes, he makes it very clear and plain who's coming. He's bright and glorious and like, who is that? Is that an angel? Is that God? Who is it? So his name is there displayed with his blood on his robes to make sure you understand. It's Jesus Christ coming on a white horse with his blood on his robes and his name is written. He has crowns on his head. So nobody's confused. Say, so who's that? Is that God? Is it an angel? Who is it? It's Jesus. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Nobody else can take this title. Nobody else has the right or the authority to receive this name. It's only Jesus alone, and it's pleasing to the Father. Father God, Almighty God, has given Jesus all authority, all power, all honor. It glorifies the Father when he sees his Son glorified. The Holy Spirit is glad to see Jesus glorified and magnified. The Son of God is the most amazing person in the Trinity, in all of heaven, in all of earth, and all over the world, in, in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. Even all the demons of hell bow down and worship him, and they scream his name in hell. Every wicked person in hell right now is screaming the name of Jesus. They're not calling on Lucifer. They're calling on Jesus. But their time is over. The Bible says, appointed once for a man to die and then the judgment. But before you die, you must recognize who Jesus is, accept him for who he is, bow down to him, worship him, love him, glorify him, confess his name, and be a witness of him till he returns, even if it costs you your life. Because he is what? He is the king of kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. It's very plain. There's no dichotomy. There's no mixture. There's no compromise. There's no 
confusion, chaos, nothing. It's plain and simple and clear, and it's written in bold letters. Just in case you have poor eyesight and you can't see and you don't have your glasses on, read it in big, bold letters. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if you're blind and you cannot even see, your ears are wide open to hear. Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only one, the Son of God, the Messiah, the resurrected Christ. Revelation 19, 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God. So there's a marriage supper in heaven where we sit down, we sit with Jesus, the bride, and, and Jesus, the bridegroom, come together. The Father is there. All the holy angels are there. And we have an amazing meal. I don't know what is going to be served. Angels are going to come and serve us. They are the waiters and waitresses or whoever. And they're coming and serving us amazing food. And we are there just in awe of God, in awe of Jesus, looking around saying, Wow, I can't make, I can't believe I made it. In spite of my nonsense, in spite of my you know, flaws and inadequacies and everything, God still rescued me. He elected me. He predestined me to come to sit at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But now you see another supper. This is a supper of the wicked. The wicked are not there to sit at table to eat. The birds are called to eat the flesh of these wicked people that have been killed. And an angel says, come on. He's calling all the birds of the heavens. Imagine how many birds are in, in the universe, in this planet. All those birds are going to eat the flesh of wicked humanity that has been killed by Jesus. Then I saw an angel, Revelation 19, 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God. There's a supper waiting for all the birds. And they're going to come gather together because an angel cried out and he commanded those birds to show up. And he was standing in the sun, not even next to it or far away from it. He was in the sun. The sun could not burn him. He's an energy being created by God. The sun cannot burn him, cannot affect him. He's just there in the sun in that hot million degree temperature and he's just calling out the birds. He's like, I'm not concerned. This fire is not going to burn me. I'm a supernatural created being, but my job is to stand in the sun. All of this is for the glory of God. Think about it. God says, go, angel, go stand in the sun, in that hot burning liquid fire, and from there, give a decree. Command all these birds to come to eat the flesh of all these wicked people. Revelation 19, 18. That you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. You see who is included? All the kings, all the captains, these are all the politicians, all the rulers of the different countries, rulers of the media, of all Hollywood, music industry, financial industry, all these people that have manipulated the system for their own personal gain and, and robbed the poor and oppressed the poor and taken advantage of the poor. They are the ones that will be killed by Jesus and then the birds are going to be invited to eat their flesh. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, all these people, they'll be crushed. All the Hollywood movie stars, all the rap stars, all these so-called people, Kanye West, all of them, their flesh will be rotting on the ground and birds will come to eat their flesh that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. Small people, regular Joes, on the street level, homeless people, whoever, or the kings of the earth, the rulers, all their flesh will be crushed, and the birds will come like vacuum cleaners, come and clean up all the flesh, so that we can clean up the earth of all this wretched, wicked humanity. Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against 
his army. So John is saying, I saw the beast, the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth and their armies. What are they doing? They gathered together to fight against Jesus. Imagine a multitude of soldiers and armies and kings and, and the beast leading them towards their own death. It's a suicide mission. You can't fight Jesus. He's going to wipe you all out with one word. But that's how insane they are. That's how you know delusional they are that they can think they can actually fight against God Almighty and win. How many delusional people that you come across today that they think, oh yeah, I can be rebellious against God. I don't have to obey God and I can get away with it and I can go to heaven. Plenty of those crazy people around. They don't obey God. They live in lawlessness, in wickedness, in rebellion, and they're fully convinced they're going to go to heaven. And John says, I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies. The kings are not just coming by themselves in their nice Escalade and their nice fancy limousine. They're coming with their armies. The Russian army, the Chinese army, the Middle Eastern Arab armies, they're coming. The Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, atheists, all these people are coming against Christ. All the New Agers, you name it, they're all around us today. They're all openly rebellious against God. They gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Like I said, we are the army of God. We are behind him. We don't have to lift a finger. This army is a relaxed army. We don't have to pick up weapons or fight these people. No, we just have to watch and see what Jesus is going to do to these people. Revelation 19.20 Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who works signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. See, along with the beast is the false prophet. The beast was captured and with him the false prophet. How many false prophets are there right now today? On YouTube, on Christian television, they prophesied all of 2020. They never prophesied the, the pandemic. They never prophesied that Trump would lose. They prophesied the opposite. They are the false prophets. They will deceive people. But this one false prophet who works signs in his presence, these false prophets can say, oh, I have a testimony. I prayed for this one and they got healed and I did this miracle and I did that and I went up in heaven in an escalator and craziness today, craziness, madness, and people are running to them by the millions. And then they will deceive the masses to take the mark of the beast. Be careful of these false prophets. Be careful of all these wicked, evil leprechauns that are deceiving you in the name of Jesus. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. That's the purpose of deception, even from false prophets. It's to basically line you up, take the mark of the beast, worship the image of the beast, and then get trapped in the kingdom of darkness, and then wait for God's judgment to come to wipe you out. False prophets are very dangerous in our time and day. Too many of them. False apostles, false prophets, false pastors, false teachers, fake, counterfeit. They come as ministers of Christ, but they are wolves in sheep's clothing. They By their fruit, you come to know. By their, check the tree and check the fruit. They have a history of abuse. They have a history of robbing people of money. The minute they bring money into the equation, they are fake and they are false. Right there you know. They're doing it for money. They worship money. They don't worship God. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. You say, oh, that's not a loving thing to do. Why would Jesus do that? Throw people alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. He's the same loving Jesus. He loves them unconditionally and he still throws them into the lake of fire. Not the beast, of course. But if it's a human, the love of God is still there. He loves all of humanity. He loves all of his creation. But with the wrath of God, you will end up in the lake of fire. So first goes the beast and the false prophet. And then guess what? Who goes after? All the wicked. Their bodies got killed. Their soul is alive. Their soul will be picked up by the angels of God and thrown into the same lake of fire. 
Now go swim with the beast, go swim with the false prophet, and now you are burning etern in eternity forever and ever. Disobedience to God has a very high price to pay. The consequences are horrible. Revelation 19.21 And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. So Jesus killed the rest with the sword that came out of his mouth. From the mouth of him, in capital letters, him, Jesus, who sat on the horse. We don't have to do nothing. We're just watching and we are shocked and the fear of God is in our heart like, oh my goodness, I'm glad I'm on this side of heaven that I'm not on the earth when Jesus returns. Why do we want people all the time? Do not be left behind over here. Get your life in order right now. Get your spiritual life in order right now. Jesus will come suddenly, the imminent return. The rapture is imminent, anytime. You never know when it'll happen. There are no warning signs before the rapture. It may just happen. We don't know the timeline. That's why you have to be prepared today. Today is the day of salvation. Today you get your life in order. Today you get right with God. Forget everything else. Forgive everybody. Release everybody. Surrender everyone. Give them up to God. Say, Lord, I can't do nothing with any of these people. I just surrender to you. I just have to give an account for my own life. I don't know about any of the rest of these. Even my own family members, my brothers, my sisters, mother, father. What can I do? I can't save nobody. I'm nobody's savior. The burden of salvation is on Jesus. It's not on you. Stop getting entangled and carrying false burdens and false responsibilities for people around you. Yeah, we are concerned for them. Yes, we love them. They are our family members. Yeah, they are relatives. But that's all you can do. You can petition. You can pray. You can intercede. You can fast for them. You can cry to God for them. That's all you can do. That's the scope of all that you can do. There's nothing beyond that. Only Jesus is the Savior of the world. Nobody else. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. All the birds. Millions of birds on the planet. And they ate up all the flesh of these humans. So we'll close here because now the next is Revelation chapter 20. So we must realize the wrath of God is real. And it's coming on humanity, on the wickedness of man. There are people that hurt you, there are people that did you harm, people that abused you. The wrath of God abides on them. Jesus said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. How will he repay? Just like this. A sword will come out of his mouth and he will destroy the wicked. So leave the justice to God. Leave the judgment to God. Don't get mad at people and hate people and say, oh, they'd harm me and they hurt me and they this to me and that to me. Forgive them, release them, surrender them and say, Lord, you judge them. Give me justice. And God will show you his justice. It's very severe. It's very scary. It's terrifying to see the wrath of God. But it brings awe that who is this Jesus who's been given all authority, all power, all dominion, all glory, all honor, and the power to destroy all of humanity that came against him. He's not going to spare even one. Not, there won't be one survivor after this battle. There won't be one. He will make sure that each one will be wiped out and the birds are going to come and eat their flesh. Think of that. Like, is Jesus that? Angry? Yes. He's coming with this wrath of God Almighty. It's the Father's wrath that He's releasing on the earth. God has been watching every human being, every day, every hour, every second, to see whether they will change, to see whether they will repent, to see whether they will turn to Him. Repentance is to turn to Him. Turn, turn away from everything else and turn back to Jesus. Turn back to the Father. The Holy Spirit will help you. He will convict you of sin. He will show you the way. It's a straight and narrow way. You cannot go all out just doing lawlessness and rebellion and say, yeah, I love Jesus and he's going to rescue me. That is not the way. That's delusion. You have to walk the straight and narrow. Be obedient unto death. Overcome all things. Pay that price. Carry the cross. Deny yourself. See, when you start to preach that, everybody runs away. Oh no, that's too hard. Oh no, I can't pay that price. Oh no, Jesus is asking too much from me. Well, Satan won't ask you anything right now. He'll give you everything you want, but you will die with him. 
he won't die basically he'll be thrown in the lake of fire and you will also be thrown with him and you'll be company with satan and lucifer for the rest of eternity what kind of a price is that it's better to pray the price that jesus said to pray deny yourself pick up your cross crucify your flesh obey me walk in love walk in forgiveness walk in in, this, in obedience to him every step of the way all the way overcome every challenge every battle every painful suffering that you go through that's your trial by fire that's your purification that's your sanctification to be prepared for you to enter into heaven and for jesus to tell you well done good and faithful servant that's what you want to hear from jesus why why are you telling me well done lord because you paid the price you walked in obedience you overcame all things you lived a sacrificial life you crucified your flesh you denied yourself you obeyed me all the way you did all the assignments i told you to do that's how you come before god without feeling guilty or of shame because you just obeyed day by day little by little he doesn't put a heavy burden it's every day a little thing every day a little thing every day you let go of something every day he reminds you the holy spirit does that every day he works in you he works in your soul he works in your heart he works in your spirit man to get you to that place to be sanctified prepared for the return of christ so if you'll have any prayer requests you'll have any needs let us know we will pray for you and pray for us because the battle is getting more intense but we overcome all things by the blood of jesus and by the word of our testimony and the world is getting into that place where the beginning of the book of revelation will happen suddenly and then all things will start to accelerate everything start to move so fast you'll be like wow what's going on 2020 was just a precursor is just moving faster and faster and faster into the tribulation time then we have a bunch of fake preachers pastors prophets so called prophets they just clowns they just saying what you want to hear we should do a showdown get all the righteous men and women on this earth and line up all the false prophets and the fake apostles and all these jackasses and say okay let's do a showdown lord bring down fire from heaven and let's see who gets toasted and there's won't be a sacrifice they will get toasted they will get barbecued for being liars and deceivers and fake counterfeit preachers so be prepared prepare your heart prepare your soul prepare your mind your thoughts your emotions your intentions your attitude because you don't want the birds of the air to come and eat your dead flesh you don't want to be in this category you need to step out of that place say ah uh-uh, i don't want to be under the judgment of god i want to be obedient whatever the price i don't care the price lord i will pay the price i don't want to get eaten up by birds and then thrown into the lake of fire my flesh will be eaten up and my soul will be thrown into the lake of fire i don't want that so separate yourself sanctify yourself set yourself apart even if you're alone this is a time as it is because of the pandemic and lockdown we are already alone so now do it consciously say lord i will separate myself from the wicked i will separate myself from evil doers i will separate myself from the rebellious and disobedient and the hypocrites and especially the narcissists and the prideful and the people full of vanity and just just tell them to get lost you know you have to be rude to them say get just get out of here get out of my life go away i don't want to see your face again because i want to see the face of jesus that's what i want to do i want to prepare for that day when he returns i don't want to see the face of the wicked so be selfish in that way say you know what i want to preserve my space preserve my home preserve where i live and what i do so that i will be very disciplined and dedicated for the return of my savior that should be the attitude and intent what did jesus say blessed is the one that he finds waiting and watching when he returns be in that place the wise virgins preparing prepare that oil in your temple be prepared don't be empty don't be a zombie don't be people who have no soul left there's so many people now they don't have a soul they are so zombified now the soul just completely empty of any emotion they don't have a heart this cold blooded ruthless you know just horrible to see humanity in that state but we are already there so preserve your space preserve your emotions preserve your heart guard your heart the bible says 
Get ready for his return. Get ready for all these judgments to come upon the earth. There are massive cataclysms that will come. Asteroid strikes will take place. Wars and famine and food shortages and riots and all kinds of things will happen. And on top of that, Antichrist will come and say, take the mark of the beast or I will cut your head off. Well, go ahead, cut my head off. I'm not going to take your mark. Because that little pain for that beheading is better than suffering for eternity with Lucifer. So get your mind ready for that day. If that day would come and you are still on the earth and you have, they try to force you to take the mark of the beast, like, no, take my head off, cut, cut my head off if you need to, shoot me in the head, whatever you need to do. Pray, Lord, let it not be painful. Take away the pain. Take away the sting of death, Lord. I don't want the sting of death, but I'm ready to die for you. If that's the place you are today. Find that in your heart, that courage, that strength, that integrity to say, I will not compromise my faith for nothing. Find that place in yourself and be prepared for that day if that day were to come for you. So in Jesus' name, be ready for his return. Amen.